Margaret Mitchell, American Rebel, is a documentary about the author of the beloved novel, Gone with the Wind, featuring interviews with historians, biographers, and people with personal connections to her, as well as dramatic reenactments based on her personal works. The film looks into the endurance of the timeless book across all cultures. Take a look. A GPB original production, the story of a storyteller, captivating and complex, the lifelong rebel who gave voice to the New South. She published only one book, but it rocked the world, becoming America's best-selling novel and one of the most beloved films of all time. The force behind Gone with the Wind, Margaret Mitchell, American Rebel, Here to tell us more about the film is its writer and director, Pamela Roberts. Pamela, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. It's great to be with you. So first, I want to ask, where did you even come across this story, this woman behind the woman that we all know as Scarlett O'Hara? Well, of course, I saw the movie many years ago as a uh, very young person. I had not read the book, but then I got a call one day while working at Georgia Public Broadcasting from a man who said, have you ever heard about the fact that, that uh, Margaret Mitchell was actually funding black doctors throughout the South and began in Georgia and did it over her whole lifetime? And I said, what are you talking about? I can't believe that. And I looked into it, and he was right. And this was a secret that was hidden for over half a century. So I realized that this was a very interesting story and it needed to be told and it seems to go counter in a way to what a lot of people think about Margaret Mitchell, the author of Gone with the Wind. She wasn't just like, you know, a novelist sitting around toiling at a, a typewriter, although we learned that that does happen later in her life, but that she was out and she was, you know, w working as a journalist at a time when women didn't do such things. Actually, what's interesting is that when she took the job with the Atlanta Journal Sunday Magazine, her father was mortified because by then she was married to her first husband who was really a ne'er-do-well. But he didn't have a job, so Mitchell said, I'm gonna get a job. That was unheard of in the early 20th century, uh, especially by somebody coming from her kind of high-class background. So Mitchell becomes a reporter, goes into the seediest parts of town, is on death row, is rappelling off buildings just to test this, this uh, harness that they used to do uh, sculptures with at Stone Mountain. She was doing the most daredevil stuff you can possibly imagine and uh, then used her byline as her maiden name rather than her married name. So it's like she was just, she was pushing the envelope as a very young person, but in the process, she was learning to write. It looks like her first husband may have made an appearance in Gone with the Wind. <laughs> yes. Her first husband was named Red Upshaw. Well, there's a Rhett Butler. <laughs> and he, he was absolutely a bad guy. He, uh, he was very charming and very handsome, but when she married him, he beat her. He was really abusive. He went away, and then she took the job and got became somewhat successful. So he comes back into her life, and then he beats her again. So he's like, she's, uh, she did a court case. I mean, there was a, she had to go to court to get a divorce. And we had the uh, transcript of those proceedings. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like it was a very traumatic thing for Margaret Mitchell. Out of that, we show a scene in Gone with the Wind in which, in a sense, there's an implied rape by Rhett Butler with, with Scarlett O'Hara. And he carries her up the stairs. Of course, the next morning, she's a happy person. And it's like it had positive implications for her and for her life in the future. But there's absolutely a correlation, I think, with many points in Mitchell's life and in Gone with the Wind. Now, at the top of our interview, you did say that it turns out she was a benefactor for black doctors across the South. How was she able to translate what she learned about race as a child to what she eventually began to do with her money from the proceeds of the book. She never wrote about this, but what, what we did for the documentary is we looked at the, the arc of change that occurred in her life. She goes from leaving a class at Smith College because there's a black woman in it to writing Gone with the Wind, which she felt was, she didn't, couldn't see was, was a racial, raci racially polarizing novel. She, it was the times that she was in, she thought that there was nothing about race that would be controversial at all. She was shocked by that. Just a few years later, though, 
she's actually secretly funding the education of dozens of African-American doctors in Georgia and across the South through an amazing man named Benjamin Mays, who was president of Morehouse College. She actually risked her life to give the money to Benjamin Mays. A student from Morehouse would courier the letter containing money from Mitchell to Dr. Mays, and they did this for many years. So this was a lifelong commitment she made. So yes, she made a big change. Yet, and maybe in her mind, it wasn't such a big change. Who knows what she really thought about this? Well, listen, Pamela, I want to thank you so much for this documentary about this amazing woman. Thank you very much. Enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you.